English pet doll. Miniature one for my Georgian room box dolls and painted the bodice on so that I could wrap a little bit of fabric around her and have her bodice be there and then I would wrap some gauze around as a little chemisette or something. Um, but she's quite flat and her arms are too low so I'm going to make another one. These are basswood um, square dolls from the hobby store and I want the doll to be a little less than an inch only because anything smaller than that would be too hard to deal with. And I'm just going to cut, I cut her from a third of this dowel, but she'll be less flat if I cut the square part of the doll and cut the face off of one of the corners. I don't feel like getting out when I saw, so I'm just scoring this over and over again with my knife. carefully in toward what will eventually be the neck, but I'm going to have to remove a lot of material to get there. I'm just using a Olfa, O-L-F-A craft knife. Oh, there you go. L-A-X to carve this out. probably would have been better had I carved it while it was still attached. If it was still attached, I could do all this carving with something bigger to hold on to, and I always make that mistake. So try not to make that mistake yourself. If you make your cuts too big like I just did, it can split the wood. Hopefully it will not split where I don't want it to. doll that I already made, I glued a seed bead on the top of her head as a bun. A lot of the larger wooden dolls that would be regular size wooden dolls for actual children to play with had either a comb in their hair, like a Spanish comb sticking out of the back, some kind of a So now I'm going to knock off all the corners. I'm going to move some material all the way around. Maybe too much to have curved facial expressions in a doll this small. small sometimes sanding is just the best way to work with shaping
papers from Dollar Tree. It's not the best. away from you like this. Just go all the way around and I'm curving it as I go to try to round everything out. Not to make I may want to flatten the sides of her head more with sandpaper. too wide, then she's going to look like her body is too short. So I'm going to file this down all the way around here. side looks better for the head and face. Okay. Now we're going to 
to drill a, a tiny hole by very small hobby drill and held. And this time, when I did this one, it was too far down the body. I need it to be very high up. There we go. Okay, pull that back through. the arms are to brace. I'm going to try to use these toothpicks because I think they're made out of bamboo. You can cut them with your flush cutters if you don't. I don't use these for jewelry. I have better ones for jewelry. And then while it's still on the, you can start to shape it to be flat. Do the same. And then her arms are the same length as her body. I'd like these arms to be slightly shorter. But if they're too short, they'll be very hard to deal with. You can always cut them off once they're on the body. Close to the top, but be careful. I just bent my drill bit because it's so fine and I pressed too hard. If there's any kind of taper on this wood, put your hole for your arm at the top where it's less tapered. Okay, a little bit of wire. This is probably 24 gauge. little more than you think you need. Using your brown nose pliers or some ridiculously small tweezers, you can make a curved sort of loop there. Jewelry pliers are really essential. The loop is going to stick out unless you bend it over. Through one of the arms. Through the doll. And then the other arm. Leaving enough space to make another loop and to fold it over. If your loop isn't closed, your arm can fall off. I want these both facing the same way. Uh-oh. Ah, careful, because you can break that wood so easily. She's much stockier, but I'm going to paint her to look like this one and see how it goes. Maybe I can get just a little bit more off of the body just to make it not quite so ridiculously stocky. Okay. I dressed my original peg doll in a little piece of eyelet trim with the tiniest little piece of gauze to act as her sleeves and her bodice. And her arms still move. And so now I've got the other woman I'm working on. It's a little bit bigger and painted the head and shoulders, chest, with this folk art multi-surface cool bisque 
color. It's that Necro paint. It's the same paint that I, no, actually this paint I mixed, I think, out of acrylic, just, uh, acrylic gouache, and it's very matte. I think I might want to put a gloss finish on that. Anyway, I'm pleased with her, and here she is in conjunction with a toddler-sized doll and a silver rattle made out of part half of a toggle from a toggle clasp that I just cut with my so it's this and this together that I cut with my wire cutters a little jump ring and a bolly bead and I filled the end there with a little bit of clay and just painted it silver so here's the little sister she might be too old for rattle but she likes the sound and she's got a little doll which is really a big doll in her scale so I want to put another coat of the paint on the dolls face, chest, and arms, and then I'm going to paint the rest of it white. Now, normally the rest of the doll was left just wood color, but it makes it easier to dress them if you don't have to be too particular about where the dress lands, especially with these odd arms. And I just have some gesso here. Gesso is a matte white paint that is very thick and has really good coverage. So if I come up here with this white paint, I'm basically giving her a bodice on the back and the front. I should be holding this with tweezers because this is very fiddly. Get it right up into the armpit on the sides. But you want to make sure that the arms are kind of not right there um, because they might glue themselves to the sides if they are touching that gesso because the gesso is quite thick. The Folk Art Multi Surface Paint is the best craft paint, in my opinion. Uh, the Craft Smart Premium is also quite good. Uh, these are so much better than Apple Barrel, and you think to yourself, oh, but Apple Barrel is only 50 cents, and you're right, but if you need six coats of Apple Barrel to two coats of Folk Art, then in the long run, you're probably going to save money using better paint. I could do her hair. And the hair was almost always black. It was just easy to, it showed up on the wood quite well. I have here some black acrylic gouache, which is just matte acrylic paint. It's not rewettable like regular gouache. You would never use regular gouache for any of this. And I'll start on the back just going to start at the base of the oops head. Now see it sticks so you really want to hold on to it. And then just go up over the top and then we can flip it over. <laughs> Didn't even try to do that, it just happened on its own. Now the sides are tricky because you want it to kind of suggest a um, hairstyle here, right? Like big ones would have some really nice ornate curls painted on the big dolls so it was easier of course to paint detail on larger dolls this is not the right brush and now I'm just going to try to come there is this suggestion here of curls just because of the way that that paintbrush was working so if I can mimic that on the other side I'll do it. it seemed to work okay all right and then while that's 
drying a little bit. I'm gonna get out a bead to go on top of her head as her hairstyle. The six aught seed beads are too big. This is a eight aught seed bead, and this is a good size for her little bun. Just need one of those, and I'll paint it first. drop of glue on her. My my glue dropper things are totally clogged and I really need to clean them. And how I clean them is I soak them in hot water. Just take a drop of the tacky glue. Put it right on the top of her head. And then I can just this dry and it might need a second or two upright so that the bead doesn't slide off the back. You can have some floral foam. Um, you can kind of make a little place to accept her body but what you want to remember is you don't want to stick wet paint into this floral foam because it'll stick right on to her Quite messy. So we'll let that dry and then we'll come back into our face. You saw me carve this. I stuck that and put the little bun on her head and paint her hair and now I'm going to try to do her face and I'm going to zoom way in on this and what I'm going to use is a fine point marker because the fine point brush is too clumsy. You can see here, I couldn't get a good facial expression on her. Now look, when you're painting something this small, it's very, very hard, especially when your hands shake like mine and you have arthritis. So here's my fine point Sharpie, and you just want to make sure anytime you're using Sharpie on top of acrylic paint, especially matte acrylic paint, that it's been dry for a day or two before you start trying to use it. Otherwise, you're going to clog up your pen. You're going to need some kind of a clamp. If you want to sew this, you can sew it. Here's the problem with tiny sewing is that it can often be quite bulky. So I'm going to try to glue this so that the bodice has a couple of pleats right in the front. So first I'm going to just press, put her out of the way for a minute and get a little bit of glue on a stick. And I'm just going to place a little glue ar along the bodice here. And by the bodice, I just mean the center of the fabric. And then, actually, I need a little tiny bit more than that because I'm going to fold this up a little bit so that each side of the fold will have some glue on it. And I tried to pick a color that it wouldn't matter if the glue um, showed. This glue dries clear, so I'm just giving it three little... Uh, pleat there in the front and then I'm going to clamp that down with one of my clamps. You can either use these. These clamps are great. I got them at Harbor Freight years ago and they have these 
pivoting heads right here. I mean, I can't really do it with just one finger, but they do pivot if you need to. But I'm just gonna clamp those flat like that. And um, another thing I could do if I wanted to is I could press this so that these pleats stay in the skirt. But I'm gonna set this down under my bench block can get these at Michael's. They're just heavy pieces of steel that uh, will be useful for things like hammering out that blade of that knife I showed you or weighting down items or propping things up. So I'm just going to put that on the skirt and let that dry. Alright, so once this is dry, which this isn't, but I'm going to keep going here for the sake of this tutorial. Once that's dry, then I can start to glue it on to her. And I'm going to just get her little arms out of the way. We'll deal with her upper bodice in a minute. Right now we're just going to worry about the skirt or the, the dress part, I guess. I'm going to get a little bit more of this tacky glue. Don't use hot glue, it's too bulky. I have Aline's Turbo Tacky Glue which is more concentrated and dries faster. And so we're just gonna um, have our tweezers. Now these tweezers are great because they have rubberized tips on them and you can clean them. So I'm gonna pick her up by her head and just dab some glue on the bodice. And you want it to kind of be dimensional just so if it soaks into parts of the skirt that are still porous, it won't soak in so much that it doesn't stick. And then I'm just gonna stick those pleats that we made right on her chest where I put the glue. If I need to, now this isn't, see how it's kind of, I need to straighten this out just a little bit like that and then I might need to make the tiniest slit for her arms and I have some very tiny scissors that I use for this all I want to make sure is that these arms can go back down again once the dress is going all the way around her so I'm just gonna put a little slit right where the arms are okay and then I'm just gonna pick her up. There's a little bit of glue on her side. I'm gonna put it on the side and across the back. Okay. Let me zoom in. So I'm gonna fold that over and I can tell that I'm not going to need quite this much fabric, so I'm going to cut just a tiny bit off of the side here. And I try to make a tuck, so I'm going to need a little glue on the outside of the fabric there. One tuck there and then this is going to come around thusly and now you can see her little dress so what we want to do now is get her arms out of the way and using this uh, same clamp or you could use a clothespin but you'd have to finagle it just a tiny bit we're just going to clamp those right there okay and just let that dry now what I'll do sometimes is I will have something I can stick this so that she's not leaning on any part. In other words, if I lay her down, it could skew the skirt in one direction or another, but if it's exactly how I clamped it, it should be good. So we'll come back and look at her in just a second. And by just a second, I mean, you know, when she's dry, which might be more than a second. But through the magic of editing, it'll be a second. I've decided to glue down this weird little bodice that I made and then I'm going to come in with a little bit of thread or something very, very thin to make a kind of a sash or 
something. And what I had done is cut the back of this, um, cut the back of this bodice off because it was too long. And now I'm gonna cross those two straps over in the back just to, um, just to give her a little bit of coverage there. And what I've done now is bring the neckline up too high. So I'm just gonna pull it down a little bit with my stick here. All right, there we go. All right, and then make sure her arms come down, and they do. So I'm gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm just gonna have a look around in my trailer over here. And I thought maybe a little piece of that pink. Often when you get trims like this, the end is gonna unravel. So my, I might just cut a little bit of that away. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna just hold it up and look. Like, what does it look like? Could this be, how, how would it go? Would it go over her head and make, I mean, that's kind of cute. It's not like period accurate or anything, but it is really kind of cute. And lay the V down and what does that look like? And in some ways I like that. So I'm gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do, Cut off this excess over here in full size. it's the next day and here is our new little doll with her not really very Regency neckline but I don't care because I like it and the fact is is that it's very difficult to do things so small let alone have them I mean this looks really good in terms of it, you know, it reads Regency. This is a little more Victorian to me, but I don't care. I did notice that one of her arms is a little bit longer than the other, but you know, you get to a point like this where if you try to change things too awful much, you could end up ruining it. <laughs> but I am going to cut this off and hope for the best. Come on, don't break, please, please. Thank gosh. Okay, there we go. So we've got a slightly bigger doll for bigger sister and this little one for little sister. Thanks for watching. If you make a little tiny doll, please either tag me here at Tara Finley or on Instagram at Tara Finley Art because I would absolutely love to see your little tiny dolls. The lake is 100% frozen. In other words, the surface, but it's going to be warm, and so it may end up melting in places again. This is just one of those years where I, and it's the last winter we're going to be here. I wish that it would freeze solid enough to walk on, but I'm just waiting. <laughs>